Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levi, the Gamers Doctor, Esports Doctor. Today we're talking about something that we've all seen, we've all experienced in the gaming and esports community, and that is Gamers Rage. So, we're going to talk about that pretty extensively, and I want to give you some coping techniques. And I want to give you the way I qualify Gamers Rage. And then I want to give you some stats about what I've experienced and seen in my own practice here in Los Angeles with the gaming community. I'm really fortunate to take care of many, many gamers here in Los Angeles, as well as gamers who fly in from different countries who, who need my care for, for review of issues that may be bothering them, uh, to talk about Gamers Rage sometime also. So we have, we have a lot to discuss with this issue. So let's begin. When it comes to gamers' rage, there's so many studies now that are pointing to the fact that if we game a lot, especially if we do a lot of videos that have a lot of violence in them, that this can possibly increase someone's provocation to go out and do something that is, you know, violent or not correct. Now. The, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, their studies so far on video game players have shown that if someone does extensive amounts of gaming, that there are several things that may happen. One, they may become more aggressive. Secondly, they may have an increased BMI, therefore be, they feel that it will increase the sedentary lifestyle. You know, the, I believe it's the American Journal of Preventive Medicine they had a study that basically said that it does increase a sedentary lifestyle if you are gaming. Um, however, I'm not in our community, of course, people are more active. However, they really say in their study that it seems to promote a sedentary lifestyle. The other thing from the CDC is that by gaming intensely or extensively, it does not only increase the the amount of aggression that someone may have, but again, increase the amount of their body mass index, I mean, the, how, their weight, they may become more obese or, or, or increase their, 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 their body weight, basically. Now, the other issue about this also says that it, be, it can cause a reliance on social media for social support, meaning that people who are gaming a lot, possibly then, they're not really going out to interact with their friends and family that if they're gaming, they game even more, but they're not doing anything to be really socially active, like speaking to their friends, going to parties, basically interacting with other individuals versus interacting with their monitor, their keyboard, or their stylus and pad. So I wanna, I wanna tell you what I've seen in my practice over the past year. And again, for myself as a solitary practicing physician here in Los Angeles, these are the stats that I can share with you. Now, if you go to someone else, they may have something different, but that doesn't affect me. I want to tell you what I've experienced. So in the past year, I've had about 46 people, 46 patients, that have had fractures in their hands and wrists because of rage, gamers' rage. So, and I believe I want to categorize gamers' rage as the following. This is my definition for it. As the gamer's doctor, as the esports doctor, I've thought about this for a long period of time. And I think about it as S3. So there is the following. The screen, the slam, and the swing. Now I want to go through all of these for you. So the first part of gamer's rage I define it is someone just screams. They're hollering at the the, the monitor, they're screaming at the persons that they're playing with, or even screaming at themselves because they made a mistake, or they see the word defeat pops up, you know, because they've lost a battle. So the first one is the scream, the screaming. The second part, which is a, more of an escalation of that, is the slam. Someone who slams their fists down on a desk, or they will slam their keyboard down on the desk, or they may even, believe it or not, slam their monitor or their computer onto the desk um, or onto the floor. So again, I call it, I define gamers rage as S3 or SQ, the scream, the slam, and the swing. Let's talk about the swing. 
The swing is that someone is so enraged, they're so angry, they're so PO'd that they will take their keyboard and swing it into the wall, or they will throw that keyboard into the monitor, or they will swing it and break it over their, their thighs, or they will actually will take a swing with their fists through the monitor, through the screen, through their computer, through their iPad. It, it's unbelievable. So we're talking about this today because it has to be addressed because we have to bring it to the forefront so we can do something about it. And more importantly, to give you some coping techniques so that you don't do that. So again, there's a screen, there is the slam, and there's the swing. That's the way I define gamers rage, S3 or S cube. Now the issue is how do we do something about this? Well, you know, we were taught a long time ago if you, if you your clothes catch fire to drop, stop, and roll, well, I want to apply that same technique to gamer's rage. So the first thing to do when you're getting so angry, and you have to always be aware of how you're feeling because before you know it, it's over and things are broken up, your monitor's broken up, you can't do anything, now you can't play, now you have to invest in another computer, another keyboard, another mouse, you know, that's, that's the big thing I've seen people break their wrists or fracture their wrists by slamming on the mouse. They're so angry they slam on the mouse or they'll slam on the keyboard and we'll get a, a comminuted distal radius fracture or ulnar fracture or displaced fractures or they get a scaphalunate ligament injury that needs to be corrected. So let's, let's not do that. Let's not. So with Gamer's Rage, I recommend the following. When, you, when you're angry like that, you have to remind yourself, you have to pull yourself out of it, and you have to just stop. Right when you pick up something to slam it down, just take a breath, stop, walk away. So you have to stop is the first part of our plan to defeat gamer's rage and to get it under control. You have to drop what you're doing. Now I didn't say swing it or slam it, drop it. So stop, drop, roll. Roll away, walk away. So you want to stop what you're doing, drop what you're doing, walk away from what you're doing. And then the last part I want to add to that is breathe. So it's stop, drop, roll. The roll is to walk away and the B is to breathe. So you get out of the situation, leave your desk, leave wherever you're gaming, whatever gaming arena you're in, you leave that, you stop, you breathe, you walk away and you stay away, go outside for just a minute. That will be just enough to save you from breaking up your keyboard or hurting yourself or hurting someone else. But you have to do that. Now I wanna say this, the other part about gamer's rage that I want to address today is the aftermath. So if you break up your computer, you break up your monitor, you break your mouse, then you're left in this even darker place because now you can't game. So that will induce more stress. That will induce more anxiety. It will induce more rage because now you can't do what you love doing. So imagine if we can't game, what that does for us. <laughs> you know, let's not think about that. So you have to take yourself out of the situation and breathe through it and then go back. But you have to have that cool down period. You know, it's kind of like May in uh, Overwatch you know, she's in that ice block for five seconds, you have to put yourself in that block for about a minute just to walk away, to, to say, hey, let me just relax and go back to it, all right? So let's talk about the aftermath of Gamer's Rage. Again, now you have a broken monitor, a broken mouse, broken keyboard, and possibly a broken wrist, broken hand. Now you're really out of the, you're, you're really out of the mix, really out of it. So what happens then? Then you're getting depressed and stressed out and anxious. And maybe you can't work because now you have an injury. So you really have to think not simply about the now, what about the aftermath? You know, as my dad would say, with everything we do, there's always a consequence. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I want you to not endure those consequences. I want you to not have that drama. I want you to be in control. And I say that because of this. You have to really think about it in this way. Are you controlling the game or is the game controlling you? I want you to really think about that because that's the ticket. You know, if you're slamming things 
and throwing things around, then you're letting the game take over you. You letting you're becoming the bot. You're becoming the AI. You know, you're you're the one that's really not in control. So you really have to keep these things in mind. Why? Because one, I don't want you to be injured and have to come and see me and say, Doc, I, I did this, Dr. Levi, I broke my wrist by, by hitting through my, my monitor. You know, I don't want that to happen. And I want you to get on with your life so you can game and game really well and win. So use your first instrument. What is that? Your first instrument in gaming as well as in life is your brain. So I want you to think about the following. You stop, drop what you're doing, roll or walk away, and then breathe for at least a minute or two before you go back to the hot zone, all right? That may save you a lot. It may save you a visit to myself. It may save you a visit to like a psychologist or psychiatrist because now you have a severe stress. You know, so I want you to be healthy. And game was raised. We have to address it because so many people think it doesn't exist. But if you look at YouTube and some of the things we've seen on there, it does exist. And my thoughts are the following. What can I do to help the community the gaming and esports community to be healthy, and what can we do to prevent it? Prevention is with the following. Just stop, drop, walk away, breathe. All right, so I hope this helps you. This is Dr. Levi. I really appreciate your subscriptions and following on all my social media platforms from, from Twitch TV to YouTube to Instagram to Twitter. I really appreciate you, and I hope this video helps you.